Hi, my name's Leanne Shawler. I'm an artist, a writer, and you're a solid guide. But today we're going to talk about all things, all the things, because I've decided to start a vlog. And so we're going to just wander through my days. I'm just going to, I'm not going to have you watch me wash the dishes or anything like that, at least not unless I get desperate for content. Uh, but I am thinking, you know, outings that I do, plain air excursions, uh, visiting to creative places. Like, for example, let's start with today. I uh, went to the uh, Creative Incubator in town, and I will link to them somewhere below. And so that was an interesting experience. We went to get our frame installed around my dad's lead light pendant that he made for me many years ago before he passed away, and we chatted with Mark Burslin. Similar to the glass you've got in the front, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, in the back room. Yep. And I think the other clear one you've got there was like just, the, the, was the ripple, one. yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not too ple pleased on that one. I'd go with one that had a smaller um, ripple to it. Uh -huh. uh, no particular reason. I'd go for one of those. Oh, I like that one. Yeah? Yeah. Um, the best way to see it is probably on the light table. Mark was also uh, repairing a lead light butterfly that my dad had made for me and it had fallen apart in the move, it had gotten wet and the lead had kind of like disintegrated a bit. So while he worked on that, it took about half an hour to get back together again, we wandered the creative incubator and had a look at all the studio spaces. Some of them were smaller than my studio and some of them were really lovely and quite large. She does her own pigments. Hmm. Cool. It's been a while since I've painted with Flora Bali virtually all the time and so I got a little mad crazy and went out and bought two really large canvases ready for the, the day. It set it up like days in advance of the actual gathering. I cleaned off my glass palette and actually took all my brushes out from the washing area and put them back in the cases where they belong. Yesterday was a fun early start. I got up at 6.30 in the morning, which is a little early for me. And I uh, went down here to the studio and it was so foggy yesterday. I wish I had thought to have taken footage yesterday so you could see how foggy it was. It was pretty foggy. It was for Flora Bolly's free painting gathering, which she was using as a teaser for her community free flow, which by the time you see this, the doors will have closed. Um, and we'll find out whether or not I become a member. So it was two hours of painting and I had such a great time painting. So I thought I would show you today what I did yesterday. And uh, yeah, let's have a look. Um, I never actually watched what Flora was doing. I looked over my shoulder every now and then and every now and then she would stop with some inspiring advice or suggestions, um, just general ones because she wasn't picking on anybody in particular. This is the painting I spent most of my time on. I'm just, just walking into it so you can have a look at some of the details. And so, yeah, a lot of my work went on to this one. And then right next to it, right next to it is this one. Um, and I think it's finished. It's really minimalist for me. If you know my work, I have lots of layers, lots of stuff going on, uh, but this, it just seems like perfection. Worcestershire. Every month I do a full moon dream board uh, that was in, that was taught by uh, Jamie Riddler. I'll link to her below as well. Uh, she does them now in her studio yearbooks, which I highly recommend. I did her studio yearbooks for a few years before I downsized to a smaller size journal. And so I do this every month and I just love looking upon it and reflecting of what my month might hold and what my light might be asking of me this month. 
Once upon a time, there was a girl, a woman with perhaps girlish if utterly true notions. She longed for the sea, any body of water really, for sunsets and the occasional sunrise. She longed to feel at home in her hometown, and sometimes she did and everything felt natural, but it often seemed like she was sticking connection with the land, with humans, and having fun with others. Her life is uniquely hers, woven together from strands of art making, writing, from nature and from her inner world, which is so temptingly magical. Her studio brings the sunsets and all of nature's glory inside, still untamable and still glorious. Her work beams at this connection and glory and joy to the world and invites people to play in it. There is mystery here too. What new chapter lies beyond the shining door? What secrets does the green man have to tell? What song does the silver bell sing? Some of these are not yet answers, but reminders to look for the sacred, mysterious, for the sisters, and the holy revelation. So I will keep dreaming these possibilities, these hidden answers, into being and into the light. The local art gallery is having a curation of zines based on the ecological, environmental theme. And so I decided it'd be fun to join in on that. And you're seeing me here going through all my collage supplies. Um, actually, that's a lie. That's all of them. That's the ones I use for um, making zines and other small collages. And I have some of my own artwork that I'm using that I've scanned and repurposing. And I'm just, you know, selecting pieces and piling them up. I may or may not use all of these, but that's what I have. Oh, going plain air painting because it's been a bit cold. It's still cold. Um, it's not windy though. I want to give this a go. I'll wear fingerless gloves and we'll see. <laughs> I think I'm ready. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'm just going to walk the neighborhood. I have a place in mind and I'm just going to go try it out. That's a lovely Banksia bush and you saw the local flock of rainbow lorikeets that you'll see again a little later on in this vlog. Um, yeah, I had some interesting hair going on there too. Mount Sugar Life in the distance and there's my finished painting. And I'm looking back up at the scenery again. Hello, so um, I'm here in my library. Um, it's called the library because that's where all the books are. You can probably hear the dove in the background. It's pretty ubiquitous here. I am just in casual clothes. Today I'm going to have a bit of a retreat day. I really need to sit down and think about Soul Deep and where I want it to go as well as my entire creative life, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, not, not a whole lot, just a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to do that um, today. I don't know how much of that I'm going to film because it's just me sitting and looking at a computer or writing notes. I'm planning to take a couple of walks. I might take you on my walks and maybe have a chat to you about what's going on in my head so you'll get unfiltered me. Aren't you lucky? Once I force, I choose to edit this out. So I'm heading out for a walk and yes, it's cold. <laughs> um, it's going to get colder this week so that's going to be something to look forward to. So far for my retreat day, I have sat with one of my paintings beyond as a soul deep meditation. And that brought up some interesting things. It felt like the woman was dissolving into the bright future or place that we can only glimpse at. That future is bright and wonderful, but do I want to lose my entire self in that? Or is she my soul deep guardian, whose work is done here, and she's moving on? I have found my speed of soul, and I'm shedding the hustle and the pain point and vain promises that I was grasping for to make soul deep a success. In fact, I'm no longer grasping. What does this mean for Soul Deep, for my creative life? I share the experience and the truth as I find it. And then I just joined a Flora Bolly's Free Flow art community, artist community. And in like last month's a video, she just heart circles every month. 
and it was about your creativity. Well, what was it like 10 years ago now and 10 years from now? And that revealed some very interesting things. So um, I'm going to take a little walk and a ponder, and if there's anything interesting along the way, I will show some video footage of it. 10 years ago, I was just really getting started with my artistic creativity, with painting, and right now my creativity is bursting out all over. And in 10 years, my creativity, I hope, will continue to sustain me and provide joy and delight. Oh, and I spotted a new-to-me bird while I was on my walk. It's a blue-eyed honey eater. That's that little green-winged back birdie there. And I talked to the owner of the house to find out all about blue-eyed honey eaters. Well, I am about in the halfway point of my retreat today. I'm wondering if it's going to be longer than a day. Um, so what have I learned? I've learned a new bird in my neighborhood. <laughs> I learned that I do not like sound bars. I thought I would love it because I love music, um, but my ears were not happy with it, which is interesting to learn, actually. The flute part was lovely, but... So I have some questions to ask myself. I'm definitely getting the sense that Soul Deep is not over yet. I'm getting the sense that I'm being asked to step into it in a more vulnerable way. Yay. Don't we all love being vulnerable to complete strangers? So this afternoon, um, I was supposed to go for another walk. It's too windy, it's too cold. I'm not doing that. Even though I might see another honey eater, but I'm not doing that. So I'm going to dive into having tea with Sol Deep. We'll see how she feels about having tea with me. Um, it's a... Uh, technique to use with the monsters in real life um, that a dear friend um, Elizabeth uh, has done. It's like your fears, like those inner critic voices. I've done it once with my speed of soul and that was interesting. So I'm thinking it may work again with with Soul Deep and we'll, we'll try that. I mean I have an image of her already the, the guardian of Soul Deep, as I call her. And we'll have a little conversation and see what she wants and needs. So that'll be fun, I think. <laughs> and and then I'll start shifting from the, the wondering and dreaming and into, like, planning mode. So, um, yes. So I should probably stop procrastinating and get back to it, huh? Hmm. I have taken Soul Deep to tea and that was an interesting conversation. I might share more about that in a future YouTube video on the Soul Deep theme. I enjoyed my white chocolate hot drink, which is now a cold drink because it's cold here. Have I mentioned that? I chose not to do it in silence. I put together a playlist um, of songs that were like Soul Deepy inspiring and I thought I would share that with you. So there's the piece my husband wrote that you hear on all, most of the meditations. Of course, Sarah Kroger's Belovedness. I love this song. Uh, yeah, there's a stack of Abbott in there. A little bit of Anthony Warlow, who is a musical theater actor. Bit of Duran Duran. Bit of The Greatest Showman. I just finished listening to, where is it? This one here, Too Much For One Heart. It's out of Miss Saigon. And I think it must be like a slightly different lyrics because it was, um, that was good. So I've been worried I would be giving up Soul Deep at the end of this retreat, but that was not so. It might lie in the future, but I still have much to learn and take to heart and to share. It might be too much for one heart, but I will not refuse the call. The next part of my retreat was to do a course that is provided um, in the lighthouse. It was like, what happens when your light changes? And I was beginning to worry a bit that um, my Soul Deep light my light was changing from soul deep into something else now that I've picked back up creative writing. And now I'm thinking, no, nope, just been confirmed, soul deep's here to stay. So that's uh, good for you and me, I guess. Um, and I'll be sharing more about that later. So I'm skipping that step. I just like I skipped the walk. I'm going to go into the planning part of it now. Um, I'm a member of a different commun artist community, the Happy Artist Studio. And she supplied a, a checklist for like the six month mark, like, how's your year going? Now, I didn't do the beginning part, but I'm going to do this checklist um, just to get a feel for not just Soul Deep, but more creatively, all the different things that I want to do for the remainder of the year. And 
Yeah, so that's next. And then probably we'll have time to dive into some planning for the next set of YouTube videos. Um, what I want to do there as well as um, Instagram. Because I'm running out of Instagram reels. That's never a good sign. All right, back in I go. Woo! Oh, these are my computer glasses, by the way. Not the pair that I usually film my videos in. Um, but a lot of computer work and watching videos and reflecting and journaling and reading PDFs and all that. And I think we're done. Sadly, I hope to do a lot of planning for YouTube and I could only really sketch out three episodes. Um, partly because of the direction is changing. It's just not going to be a predictable set of episodes um, every other week. So I'm doing it once every two weeks. So I'm just writing the Instagram captions for this week. I'm not posting today, Monday, um, which none of you will know or care about by the time you see this. Um, I'm decided to go down to four days a week instead of five. The retreat day has come to an end. Bloody gold. We started a fire and it went out and uh, my husband tried three times. <laughs> Uh, no success. So I think he needs a lesson in how to set a fire in a little wood stove. But thankfully we do have heating in the house. We do not have heating down here in the studio though and that's a bit rough. I'm doing some filming today. I'm in several layers. The first one is uh, for an upcoming uh, painting release, solid painting release uh, video for that. Just a little remark for that painting and then it should be about ready to go out. I've been sitting on it for months. Um, and just new things just keep getting revealed to me to add to it. So that's what I've been doing. Um, sometimes you just can't rush these understandings of what a painting wants and needs <laughs> in order to be shared in the world. So I'll be doing that and then I'll be working on some YouTube filming. Am I a bit red faced? Yes, I am. I should be. I had just moved furniture around. I tried to time lapse it, but uh, user error. It only happened from one camera angle, not the other, so I'll have to see what footage is actually usable. But I moved my sofa from under the window to um, the wall adjacent. Yeah, that's the right word, adjacent. Um, and then moved my IKEA shelf uh, to where the sofa was. Let me show you. Oh, well, you have to look at this. I haven't shown anybody this yet. A flying pig. When pigs fly, they fly all the time down here. So I moved the IKEA shelf here, my catch-all table for things worth holding props etc is now pressed into use to light up that dark corner. There's the sofa table and the chotkey thing I had here is now over here. Looking a bit lonely, I might move it to the other side of the PowerPoint but I also don't want to get it spattered by paint accidentally from the easel here. So. I think it will stay there. Oh, that's my new frog. Isn't he adorable? You pick him up. Put him in the light. Isn't he not? Just the cutest thing. Um, my friend Rebecca Ann made that for me. And then this is also new since the video tour. I got a proper stand thing because giant paper clips were bending the cards. So I could tell which cards I use, which is not good. So we have Esther. When I lean towards love, I am led. And if you want to be someone, be yourself. And I am enough. So that is the update to the studio tour, uh, which I posted two weeks ago, I think. I'll link to that studio tour. I think the theme is, if you know, if you think you know, you know, you don't know. And that's just the case here. They're very pretty. Yeah, you are. What you up to, huh? What you doing? Why aren't you over there eating? Hmm? Yeah, why aren't you over there eating? Why? I don't have any food for you, I'm sorry. But gosh, you're pretty. Yeah, very pretty. You're pretty boys or girls. Yeah, you are. Very much so. Yeah. Off we go. Bye. And I am 
about to go for the plain air walk. Um, it's 10 degrees warmer than it was earlier this week. So I am thinking that this would be a good day to go do that. And if not, I'm going to take some reference photos and come home and paint from them because I'm not going to freeze today. How windy is it? <laughs> it just keeps blowing through this under the screen door. And that's the painting I did. It'll be this one or this one, or I might actually merge the two together because I like the hills on this one. And I like the foreground in this one, and I actually kind of like the sky. So, this is um, watercolor, and this is gouache. I thought I would try gouache today. So I'm going to clean up my kit. It's currently hanging around my waist down here. We had lunch before we picked up the framed painting, and it was at a local Mexican chain, and it was actually not too bad. I would have preferred a little more avocado than um, what was in the the thing and there were no beans either so anyway now you get to see me hang up the painting isn't that exciting and then I had to uh, put wires on the back of this finished painting from the creative challenge uh, you'll see it in a second when I've got it up on the wall and oh I don't know if my hands were cold or if I'm just particularly weak but it's difficult getting those little screws into the pine pine's supposed to be really soft um, but uh, at least I was able to do a good job with the wire wrapping this time. Here's the final look. Ta -da! Now, yes, that blue painting that I just finished is way too big for the space, but it adds a little brightness to that corner. And I might eventually move it over here and put some other people artist stuff here. That's this one is my only painting that's by me. Everything else is by other artists. A nice little inspiration corner, and I'm out of breath because I've been climbing up and down off this thing <laughs> and re pounding things in. So, there we go. I had this professionally framed. Oh, it's by Artsy Lucy. So, it's the 28th of June, and today has not quite gone as planned. I didn't feel like writing yesterday. Um, I'm not quite sure what the block was. Actually, I know what the block was. I had written down two sentences at the end of my last session, and I, it, that wasn't the time or place for those sentences. So I have written them in a separate little book where I'm keeping like notes and things, and I'm going to go back in and um, continue on later this afternoon. Meanwhile, <laughs> we had pest control come out, and uh, we knew we had cockroaches because they're just endemic is the word they're just endemic here um and what we thought was cockroach poop was actually mouse poop and it was seriously gross they'll be taken care of in the next two to three weeks there's been bait set out for them they've been here in the studio and they have been they're in the house so in the roof in both locations yay mm. so today because i have some papers that are loose in here i'm going to put them into some containers. See, I kept all that stuff from packing <laughs> and moving here for a reason. All right, well, obviously I still have to clean up, but I put these size papers, these ones that are here, into this thinner plastic bag, thinking that would be good. And then I'm like, it's going to be so hard to rifle through. So it's in the larger, I think there's an art bin or something, or a knockoff thereof. So that's going to have the extra large pieces and the medium sized pieces. So I have an A4 size document holder here. And in this one, I have my smaller uh, photo cases. I have a little, this has words in it. And then my small to middle, so small, small to middle. All right, so this was already in a plastic bag. They're um, vintage photos. Um, so I just put another plastic bag in the other end and hopefully that will do the trick. Like I haven't seen any sign in that drawer of visitors. These are photocopies of photos and an original photo. My grandfather and his brother, I think. Um, and then I have a print. So that's in this nice big one. Oh, did I seal that up properly? No, no, I didn't. And then the same style of bag and I have my sheet music in there. So that theoretically should do the trick. 
I thought that some of my vlogs um, I will share like some work in progress. But right now we're in technical oh my god land. And yes, that's an angel. It started out as some blobbies that looked oh a bit like an angel. Then I gave it a skirt and a wings. Anyway, this. I stupidly, no. Let's be nice to ourselves. I forgot to check what the water reactivity was of the new ink that I got. I thought it was more towards the permanent side. It's not. And ink, if it's not the right kind, Tim Holtz's Distressings does this too. It will, as you apply each layer, seep up through to the top. You can see where it's really dark here and really faint there. That was all blue ink. So I have put a layer of purple and pink paint on this. I have put a layer of white gesso on this. I have put heavy matte gel on this. I'm now going to test it with white. And down here, I will just see if I can restore the teal. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna to have to like collage some acrylic skins over it and go from there. So wish me luck. It's the day after. This should be solid white. However, where I didn't quite catch the edges, it's leached through the white again. And here, must not have got enough of the heavy gel. It's a different texture, I can feel it. Um, and here, there's little spots here and there where it's still come through. I think that actually might be a gap. <laughs> so, rough spot there. I don't like rough spots. So I think I'm gonna have to pull out my acrylic skins and put something here and here, like just to scatter them. Down here the teal seems to have covered everything up really well. Um, I just need, you can see how it's, can you see? How it's a bit streaky. So I might just firm up the color a bit more. I don't think Luke is very happy being down here all by himself. Anyway, shopping achievement unlocked. Some more plastic storage from my collage papers. And so this is where I have corralled my uh, collage supplies. Two stationary cases. There's a little bit on the gappy side. I'll have to work on that. We have larger sized and we have the smaller ones in here. And this was in a bigger container. And that bigger container is now holding the extras for Project Starfish book one. So confession time. If you're following um, my channel because of Project Starfish and the ephemera and the journaling, I have a confession to make. I've done one page of the ephemera journal, hidden journaling in the actual book. And at the minute I am handwriting the book itself so I can divide them up, fold them up and hide them in the journal. About a third of the way through that book already, which is actually pretty cool. But I'm already thinking about book two, as you do. And so today's little excursion into town hit, had me hitting up a couple of op shops. And so I've got a couple of old books and I'm kind of thinking, <laughs> I'm kind of thinking um, about how to lay out book two. And I'm having a blast thinking about it. I've just put together a notes to do list like um, ideas and that kind of thing in my notes and the plan today is to collate those things into one box so when I'm ready I can pull it out. Um, there's definitely going to be flow between book one and book two with regards to collecting ephemera and labels and things um, and that's fine but these will be like bigger pieces look out oh, that's the update today is the last day of June so this is my last entry for the uh, month. I'm going to edit this all together and see what it looks like, if it makes any sense, if there's any story. I think it's just going to be a little bit of creative journey. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, for now, 